word. And it's done unto me according to your word. Hail Mary, Mary full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. Hail, Hail Mary, full, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we might be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we, we beseech, beseech you, O Lord, Lord your, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may, may by his passion, passion and cross be brought, brought to the glory of his resurrection, resurrection through the same Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather, we call to mind our need for God's grace and mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave us yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, realize that it is those who have faith who are children of Abraham. Scripture, which saw in advance that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, foretold the good news to Abraham, saying, Through you shall all nations be blessed. Consequently, those who have faith are blessed, along with Abraham who had faith. For all who depend on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not persevere in doing all the things written in the book of the law. And that no one is justified before God by the law is clear. For the one who is righteous by faith will live. But the law does not depend on faith. Rather, the one who does those things will live by them. Christ ransomed us for the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might be extended to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The word of the law. <laughs> Your response is, the Lord will remember his covenant forever. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company and assembly of the just. Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. Majesty and glory are his work, and his justice endures forever. He is one renowned for his wondrous deeds. Gracious and merciful is the Lord. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. He has given food to those who fear him. He will forever be mindful of his covenant. He has made known to his people the power of his works, giving them the inheritance of the nations. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. Alleluia, alleluia. 
The prince of this world will not be cast out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all to myself, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and my brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus had driven out a demon, some of the crowd said, By the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that it is by Beelzebul that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he relied and, destroy, and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. When an unclean spirit goes out of someone, it roams through arid regions searching for rest. But finding none, it says, I shall return to my home from which I came. But upon returning, it finds it swept clean and put in order. Then it goes back and brings back seven other spirits, more wicked than itself, who move in and dwell there. And the last condition of that one is worse than the first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's Gospel passage, St. Luke strings together several of Jesus' teachings and sayings, some of which are familiar to us. For example, that a house divided against itself cannot stand, and whoever is not with me is against me. But for me, perhaps the most interesting of these teachings is one that's less familiar to us. He tells the story about the unclean spirit who leaves a person and then goes out to roam the desert and then not finding a place to settle there returns to the one from whom it was dispelled. And he finds that the house has been swept clean and put in order. So that he goes then and finds seven other demons and brings them back so that they can all reside in the person. And therefore the condition of that person now is worse than when he only had the one demon. Now, we hear that story and we might scratch our heads and say, what is he talking about? Is it only about demonic possession? And is it really true? When we dispel one demon, do seven more later take up residence? Well, I have no doubt that it's absolutely true. And no, it's not limited to, ex to d demonic possession. <clears throat> Jesus is really teaching and warning us about our struggles with ongoing challenges. Challenges like addictions, bad habits, maybe deep grief or anxiety that we experience in life. Because sometimes when we suffer from those challenges, <clears throat> we'll, work, we'll look for a quick fix to them, we'll seem to get over them, and we'll be happy that they've left us, and then we let down our guard. 
And most of us know that when we let down our guard, the challenge comes back and sneaks up behind us and clobbers us harder on the head than it ever did before. We may have an addiction to alcohol and we feel that we've overcome it and beat it. And then we can just go out and do what we always did before. And then we're surprised when it comes back to us with a vengeance. People who suffer a, d a deep loss and have grief are stunned that they think at some point they've gotten over it, only to find in a little while later that the grief comes up much more deeply than it ever had before. You see, the reality is that we always have to remain vigilant in life, that there are always demons out there ready to take up residence in our homes, and that we need to constantly be on, on guard for them. We need constantly to be praying to God to protect ourselves from them. And we need to be able to live in the hope and faith that with God's strength, we can overcome any challenge. We have to realize that really our lives the way they are is a, is a gift and grace from God. If we're free of demons at this point, then be thankful and grateful that that is the case. But continue to pray for God's presence in our lives and for God's protection in all that we do. Because we never know when those demons might come back, when they might sneak up behind us, when they might clobber us on the head, and when they might take up residence again. We always need the grace of God in our lives at all times, and that is how we need to live our lives, that there but for the grace of God do we go. Amen. You're still recording now? Let us now place our needs before our loving God. Let us pray for our church, that we may be a source of strength and encouragement to one another, especially in our struggles, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our public officials, that they may know and recognize the challenges in people's lives, and that they may work to serve their constituents and to relieve them of their sufferings, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for those who are sick, those who are in need of God's healing touch. We continue to pray for Lilia Hubbard. We pray in thanksgiving that Debbie Briscoe is home and recovering well. We pray for all of those who need to the spirit of God's touch, that they may be brought to wholeness and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died and gone before us. We pray that they may rest eternally in the peace of Christ, and that those who mourn their loss might be comforted by the Spirit of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And what else might we pray for today? Lord, hear the prayers that we place before you, those we have spoken, those that remain in our hearts. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and fill us with your life and your love. Guide us in your way and keep us in your care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Let's be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. 
Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept this sacrifice from our hands for the, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We will lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, and all your dear people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Bernardine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Jesus taught us how to pray. So now with confidence we call upon our God, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. Let us off. Let's not offer each other. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world, world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant, grant us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And for those who may be watching our recording at a later time, we pray the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praises and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praises and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praises and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Jesus, I love you. All, All I have is yours. yours. Yours I am, yours I want to be. Do with me what you will. Jesus, I love you. All I have is yours. Yours I am, yours I want to be. Do with me what you will. Jesus, I love you. All I have is yours. Yours I am, yours I want to be. Do with me what you will. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and ever shall be, be world, world without, without end. end. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to thank everyone who assisted with this morning's liturgy. We thank, as always, Betty and Floyd Williams. We thank Mallory Anderson and David Wainwright is here with us today for our stream team. And we thank those of you who are able to join us in person. And we hope those of you who are watching us will finally figure out that we're uh, delayed and on a recording. So wish you all a very good day ahead. Let us pray now the prayer to St. Francis of St. Francis. Lord, Lord make, make me an instrument, instrument of, of your peace. peace. Where, there where there's hatred, hatred let me so love. Where, where there's, there's injury, pardon. Where, where there's, there's doubt, faith. Where, where there's, there's despair, despair, hope. Where, where there's, there's darkness, darkness, light. And where, where there's sadness, joy. O oh, oh, Divine, Divine Master, Master, grant that, that I may not, not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be, be understood, understood as to understand, understand to be loved, loved as to love. For it is when in giving, giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Be careful out there. <laughs>